Hey, hey, hey guys, it's Old Man G here, back again with another video for Red Devil Studio. Hopefully you can hear me a lot better now, my mic is now back, uh, back, so uh, hopefully you guys can hear me a lot better than previous videos, so I apologise, but the mic is back uh, and hopefully um, you can hear me. Um, so anyway, um, before we get into this video, please like, share and subscribe to Red Devil Studio, really appreciate it as we push on for 800 subscribers and going on to 1000 subscribers, really thank you for those who have supported the channel thus far, follow us on Twitter, we're United X. Anyway, this is our Manchester United vs AC Milan post max reaction, sorry guys that this is late, um, I've just been busy um, a week but I just want to give you a brief post-match reaction not going to be a long video but just a few things because obviously the big game is going to be next week when we play Chelsea in our first game where we'll do a match preview um, as I said there are a couple of videos coming up uh, regarding uh, match previews live streams pairs and all the rest of it so stay tuned this week is actually going to be quite a busy week um, but anyway um, going on to this game um, to be honest um, I didn't think we played particularly well um, overall. Um, I think that I don't know whether that was because um, we were a lot of the players that are playing maybe want, are in contention for Chelsea and didn't want to get themselves injured or anything like that. So maybe there's a bit of hesitation just regarding playing today. Um, but I didn't think overall it was the best game, and I think that um, this game was evidence of the fact that we really need reinforcements in midfield. Um, I think Matic had a well he was slow really um as but we know this and this is the thing um and there was an immediate difference when fred played um you know yes matic i mean you could argue de gea matic you know miscommunication for the for the first goal um i don't think it's entirely matic's fault um but the reality is that um i just don't think matic has the pace really to be able to deal with the 30 Premier League season, you know. Um, so, yes, he can start occasional games, but, you know, the fact of the matter is the last two seasons, sans his injury, if he's been injured, Matic has basically played, he's been our starting DM. You know, there's been no real replacement for Matic proper in that position. And I just think that... Um, with his age now and with his lack of pace, he can't be our go-to DM for the for 38 games. He can't be. Um, so either Fred or McTominay, if we're not going to get like a you know an Indeedy or or a uh, um, a Partey, definitely, you know those players we need to play in that position. You know because I just see us losing a lot of goals um, unnecessarily because that position is weak. And as I said at the beginning of this this transfer window. For me, the key positions that we need to fix were centre back, right back, um, defensive mid, and and then um, uh, right wing. Well, no, defensive mid, right back, and centre back. Well, for me, are the priorities because those are our weak, very very weak areas. In terms of in terms of supporting, then we need to get an, a holding midfield and a right winger. We can make do sort of with what we have, but it's I wouldn't argue it's enough to challenge um, for the top four. But at the very least, we need to replace we need to get a new centre back, a right back and a and a defensive midfield. We've got two of those so far. I doubt we're gonna get a DM, in which case I have a Fred and Tommy have to step in there. Anyway, so that's a bit on the negative side. I just feel that I'm hoping it's because a lot of players want to conserve their energy, but I think the performance against Chelsea Old Trafford needs to be better. Um, that said, big shout out to Marco Rashford how he took his goal. Really, really clinical. I like the technique and the, and the skill to really basically sort of come in, um, take his time and finish. I'm hoping that as the season progresses, you know, his finishing will get better. His intelligence will get better as well. He won't think about it too much and he will just sort of shoot and score because that's what we need. Because if he's our number nine, um, then he's going to have to be... He's going to have to be putting those away on a regular basis. I still think, and Marcus Rashford has said himself publicly, that he prefers playing on the wing. So I think either a Martial or even a Greenwood should be up there. Um, if we keep Lukaku, fair enough. But, you know, if he's going to be a number nine, then he's going to have to be a considerably more clinical. Um, and he's going to have to, in essentially, think less. Be intelligent, but think less. And not think too much about it. Because I feel that's the weakness in Rashford's games, that... He thinks too much 
um, doesn't make a decision and before you know it, there's a tackle or, or the goalkeeper gets or whatever. Um, Lingard's goal again, very, very good. Um, I think he had a, oh, I think he had a better performance compared to his previous um, preseason games and that was encouraging. Um, big shout out for me, my man of the match for Aaron Wambasaka, to be honest. This guy has essentially, I think, is, is, is going to revolutionise our... Um, our right back situation you know he is absolutely he is he is he is um and in terms of one-on-one getting past him especially for teams that are going to use the flanks and the wings i think it's going to be very difficult to get past him you know so i know it's just pre-season i don't want to gas him up or hype him up or anything like that but if he continues to play the way that he's played for me he's been the most impressive player of, of, of our entire pre-season he has uh, and for such a young player and just coming into united team his discipline, his motivation, his attitude. I just think that Anwan Bissak has a great future ahead for, for Manchester United. And tell me what you think, guys. Do you think so as well? Um, but yeah, guys, I'm looking forward to start the season. I will be at Old Trafford next week. Um, I will be there. Um, there. So the post match reaction may come a bit late. Um, I will be, I'll certainly be doing a preview as well as well. Maybe I'll get a few pictures on Instagram or Facebook, Facebook or whatever just to sort of share to you guys just about the game against Chelsea. But yeah, guys, um, you know, um, we'll see what happens. Um, we will see what happens. Um, fingers crossed we hit the ground running. But, you know, we won the game on penalties. Um, it was... Um, Two to the end. Um, Daniel James uh, scores the final penalty in in Wales in Cardiff, um, which was uh, which was obviously a nice touch. And he has played well. Daniel James. He has played. He's, he's played very well actually. Um, for youngster, I don't think he's going to be starting per se. Although he's certainly going to be forcing his way to start. We'll see. We'll do a predicted. I'm going to be doing a predicted lineup um, uh, before the game, um, amongst other things. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see who basically gets started because. I would be surprised if Daniel James was going to start. I would imagine Ollie would basically default back to what he knows. Um, but like I said, we'll go into a starting uh, starting eleven for the this Chelsea game next week when we talk about our preview. Thanks for listening, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Hopefully, you can hear me a lot better now. Um, follow us on Twitter, We Unite X. Let's push on to a thousand subscribers. Have a nice evening, guys, and cheers.